right, good morning, church. How we doing, everybody? Woo! Come on, let's all stay in this worship. First service was awesome, exciting for what God has in store. Again, it says in his word, don't forsake gathering together as many have made a habit of doing, but instead spur one another on towards love and good deeds, especially as you see the day approaching. That day approaching is Jesus coming, amen? Come on, so again, he's got a plan, he's got a purpose, and like we talk about here at the bridge all the time, God's plan is that the church, the wisdom and the knowledge of God would be made known through the church. That's the people of God. That's not just the building, amen? Hallelujah. The bridge is not the bridge because of the building. The bridge is a bridge because God has brought you here to be a part of and play a role in his story of what he's doing. Amen. Come on. So wherever you're at today, whatever you came in with, I want to just challenge you. It's not by chance that you're here, but it's by God's divine purpose. He wants to speak to you today. Open up your heart to receive that. Amen. Right now, we get an opportunity to worship. It's not that we have to worship, it's that we get to worship. We get to respond to who He is and what He's done. And last time I checked, you and I are breathing. So we're alive today. We have a story to tell and we have something to be grateful for. Amen? Come on, I'm going to read this. It says, Psalm 27, it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? How many of you know it can't be my light? It has to be your light. Amen? can't be my faith. It has to be your faith. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. For in the day of trouble, He will, that's a promise, keep me safe in His dwelling. And He will hide me in the shelter of His sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. And at His sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Amen? Come on. Let's all pray. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. God, I thank you, God, for your presence. God, I thank you for what you have in store today. God, we just say we want all that you have for us today. God, we lift up every church, every leader, God, every worship team, every children's worker, every parking attendant, God. We ask, may your kingdom increase today, Jesus. God, I thank you that you are good. I thank you that you are faithful, God. I thank you that you are sovereign, God. I thank you, God, that your heart is to pour out your spirit. God, to pour out your fire, God, on our sacrifice of praise. So I pray, may you look down on this place today, and may you be honored. God, may you be blessed. We say we love you, God. We praise you for all that you are. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on, let's worship. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb Until I met you And I was breathing Call 
says this in Philippians chapter 2 it says your attitude should be the same that Christ Jesus had though he was God he did not demand and cling to his rights as God he made himself nothing he took the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form and in human form he obediently humbled himself even further by dying a criminal's death on a cross because of this God raised him up to the heights of heaven and gave him a name that is above every other name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. One of the things that Jesus asks us to do is to take time to remember the sacrifice that he made for us. So we just want to let you know that there's communion available on either side of the stage. If you'd like to, to do that, it's just an, an opportunity for us to reflect, to remember the sacrifice that he paid for our sins so that we could be free. And it's not, it's not by our works. It's by this awesome gift called grace through faith in Jesus that is available to each and every one of us. So if you'd like to take time to do that, feel free.
strong and worship you And if it puts me in the fire I'll rejoice cause you're there too And I won't be formed by feelings I hold fast to what is true Cause if a cross brings transformation You can hang me there with you Cause death is just the
From 2 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, As God's partners, we beg you not to reject this marvelous message of God's great kindness. For God says, At just the right time, I heard you. On the day of salvation, I helped you. Indeed, God is ready to help you right now. Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Let's give him praise. God, you are good, you are faithful, you are kind, you are loving, you are merciful, you are holy, you are king, you are father, you are counselor, you are friend. I thank you, God, that you are for us, not against us. I thank you that, as, as your word says, it's not that we loved you first, it is that you loved us first. You initiated this relationship, even in our brokenness, even in our sin, Christ died for us. That is amazing love. God, we thank you for your grace. Each one of us here, there is no one here that can earn it on our own. It's not about earning it. It's about trusting in you and that your sacrifice was enough. So we thank you, Jesus, for everything that you endured on our behalf on the cross. Thank you for inviting us into relationship with you. Thank you for this moment where we can step into your presence and have you say, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. We love you, Lord. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, welcome to the bridge. Glad to have you here this morning. If you would, just take a moment to, to greet the people around you. Say a nice, friendly hello. Well, good morning, uh, Bridge Friend. How's everyone doing this morning? Man, I just uh, so thankful that you guys are here. I, we always see a lot of new faces, and it's, well, it's put on my heart to, like, who are we as the bridge? If you guys don't know, our heart behind the bridge, we have three heartbeats. One, a bridge connecting people to Jesus. That means everywhere we go, we are that connection to Jesus. The second one is a bridge connecting the generation. So if you look around, it's young, it's old, it's every type of background. It's connecting the generation, being that bridge, and it's also, we are a bridge of unity, and that is to the region. Everywhere we go, we want to connect people to Jesus. So those are our three heartbeats. If you guys are new here, welcome to the Bridge family. We believe you're here, your family, all in the family of God. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So for you guys that don't know me, my name is Carmelo Hernandez. I have the awesome uh, privilege to be the youth pastor here, and I'm going to be bringing the tithe and offering message this morning. Uh, be short and sweet. And then we'll get Pastor uh, Fred up here to bring that fire. Uh, so James chapter 1 Verse 16 and 17, do not, come on somebody, do not be deceived, my dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift comes down from above, from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. My brothers and my sisters, do not be deceived. Every, how many? perfect gift comes down from the father do you realize that oh like how many people are out there living right now in deception calling good evil and evil good it just it's just so much deception everything is backwards right now why because so many people are deceived we need to like pastor fred's gonna talk about catch fire but you got to realize regarding tithe and offering every good and perfect gift comes down from the father not that we have to give, my brothers and my sisters, is that we get to give. To live with clean hands and a pure heart. Lord says in Psalms 24, 4, who could stand in my holy place? Only he who has clean hands and a pure heart, pure heart. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. So even regarding like gifts, 
Man, we could be so excited about, oh, that brother has a gift of healing, the gift of faith. Oh, they could read in my mouth, very prophetic, very, oh, he could preach, great gift. Oh, what administrative, worship, whatever it is. Do you think, come on, somebody, that God is in heaven telling his angels, Gabriel, hey, uh, look at that gift down there. Look at that gift. God already knows. He's the one who gave you that gift. Because God does not give the way that we give in the world. Oh, you do something to me? I gave you that gift, but now I don't like the way you treated me? Give me that back. God's gifts and calling are irrevocable. So what does that mean? That's that, when I see people walking in their gifts, that's on how much that the Lord loves them. Come on, somebody. But their character and their humility and their fruit is on how much we know that we love the Father. That's what it's about. Gifts and callings are irrevocable. I was telling our staff and our team on Tuesday, I was talking to my wife about it. Oh, that guy, whatever, the, whatever gift it is that comes easy to you, like, they're not that cool. Come on, somebody. God's the one who gave them that gift. But how are you stewarding that gift that the Lord gave you to multiply his kingdom? But it's how you live in. Are you living with clean hands and a pure heart? Why? Lord, because every good and perfect gift comes from you, Father. Every gift. Lord, you provided all of my needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. Lord, you are the God of super abundance. We got to get rid of that poverty mindset. Right? To know that we serve a God of abundance. So there's four ways to give. I'm going to pray for you guys in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I just thank you. Father God, may you give them that revelation, Lord. May they know, Lord, that only way that they get that pure heart, Father God, and that clean hands and that pure heart, Father God. All of us are walking through sanctification, Lord, but it's dwelling in that secret place, Lord, abiding in your word, Father God, so we could catch fire, Lord, and everyone could just watch us burn, Father God. So I just thank you, Father God, for everyone who gives, Father God, not reluctantly, Lord. But gives with a joyful heart, Lord, knowing that they're sowing into your kingdom, Father God. And they're just giving back, Lord, what you already gave them, Lord. So, Father God, I pray a blessing over every single one of my brothers and my sisters. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Come on. Some of these are just uh, tithes. All righty. That's all I got for announcements. And Pastor Fred, come on up. Let me give a round of applause. Come on, sick. Can you extend your hands as we pray for Pastor Fred? Father God, I say right now, more, Lord. More, Lord. May you pour out your fire more, Lord, on this mighty man of God, Lord. And I thank you, Father God. He poured out his self as a living sacrifice, holy unto you, Father God. And I thank you, Father God. He caught himself in fire, Father God. And we're going to catch that fire today, Lord. I just thank you, Father God. May you speak through him, Lord. May you be a consuming fire in and through him, Father God. May you pierce through any hardened hearts, Father God. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you, Father God. It's about transformation, Father God. The way that we walked in here, Lord, we're not going to walk at the same awe because we're going to have an encounter with you, Jesus. And I thank you, Father God, that you use Pastor Fred, for such a time as this, Father God, to just open up the eyes of the blind, Father God, and have us all catch fire in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Well, it's always great when the announcements are better than your message. <laughs> I have to do the announcements more often, eh, you know? <laughs> no, that was awesome. And uh, hey, turn to your neighbor and say, uh, you're sitting in a dangerous place because I'm about to light my fire. I just want to put a little plug in here for the marriage uh, mystery box and uh, tell you a little story. There was a husband and wife that for weeks they've been arguing with each other. I know I know they don't, ar husband's wife don't argue, but they were arguing each other about who should get out of bed and make the coffee. You know, he kept telling her, you need to get out of bed and make the coffee. She said, no, you need to get out and make, you know, make the coffee. And finally, one day, she said to him, no, it's in the Bible. He, what? he said, what? Yeah, she says, it's in the Bible. It says that the man is supposed to make the coffee. He said, well, where is that? She says, right here, Hebrews. <laughs> I 
In uh, November last year, November 23rd to be specific, I was worshiping at home and in the midst of my worship, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said these words. He said, I'm going to pour, pour out fire on the sacrifice in 2023. I'm going to pour fire on the sacrifice in 2023. And so I, I knew right away that, that God was about to do something <clears throat> that would bring the fire of God on America once again. And I, I didn't know exactly what would bring it about, but I think there's sometimes, I think there are um, physical signs that point toward spiritual signs. And as sad as it is, really, um, this fire that has taken place in Maui at Lahaina, and I've been there many, many times. Lahaina is probably, in all of Hawaii, probably the coolest little place that you could go. So sad to hear all the people that died, but this fire swept through there. And, you know, I've been uh, almost daily, I'm praying for the people there, for the families that have lost people, uh, for the, for they've lost their homes, they've lost family members, they've lost jobs, they've lost everything, and there they are. And I'm praying about that, and uh, as I'm praying, you know, the scripture, well, not a scripture, the, uh, you know, I think it's a scripture, the scripture says what God meant for evil I mean, what the devil meant for evil, God's going to turn to good. It's, it's, you know, and obviously, if it's steal, kill, and destroy, it's the devil. It's not God. But here's what I believe. I believe the Lord has shown me that God's going to use Hawaii to start a fire across America. And I believe out of the ashes of the tragedy that has happened there, God is going to start a fire. You, you, whether you, I've been to Hawaii many, many times. I have a friend, Pastor Morocco, who has King's Cathedral on Maui, and been with him many, many times, and had him over here, and and um, uh, big church and all that. And people don't realize, uh, both in on Oahu, uh, in Maui, there are huge churches. There are a lot of Christians. In Hawaii, God moved many, many years ago. Uh, the Lord sent missionaries. In fact, one of the places that burned in Lahaina was the the original missionary house. That's right there, across from the banyan tree, where the first missionaries come, came to preach the gospel uh, to the Hawaiians. And so, I believe uh, this terrible physical sign is going to turn into an awesome spiritual move of God that's going to happen where God once again is going to pour fire on the sacrifice. This was an incredible sacrifice. But mark my word, you're going to see fire come out of Hawaii. And I want to pray for them as we get into this message this morning. My title of my message is Fire on the Sacrifice. But let's pray for those families. And this is one of our states, the 50th state of the United States of America. And let's pray for them that God will turn this tragedy into a triumph uh, for the kingdom of God. So Father, right now we pray for these precious people, Lord, who have lost loved ones, lost their houses, lost their jobs. Lord, they're there. I thank you for the, 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 all the reports of how the people have risen up to help one another and love one another and care for one another. I pray for the church there to rise up and to reach out. And I pray that in the future that Maui and the Hawaiian Islands is not known as a vacation place, but a salvation place. A place where people come and they get born again and baptized with the Holy Spirit and they go back to their homes to tell people about Jesus. Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. If you agree with that, say amen. amen. So God said to me, I'm going to pour fire on the sacrifice. And so I'm and thinking about that. What does that mean? He's going to pour out fire on the sacrifice. Well, 
Uh, obviously, we have incidences in the Old Testament uh, where literally when they offered up a sacrifice, one time was when Solomon off offered up a sacrifice, and then another time when Elijah, I remember, you remember the story of Elijah and the prophets of Baal, and how they were having a standoff, and when Elijah, uh, he, you know, he gave the prophets of Baal their shot, okay, you can go ahead, call for fire, call for on your God Baal, and all that, and they cried out all day long, and nothing happened, and then, and then Elijah, which I'll show you in a minute here, the scripture when he calls on God, it says the fire of God came out of heaven and licked up all the water. There was, there was water on it. There was wood. There was a sacrifice. And then it says it caused the people to say, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. And we need that to happen in this nation once again. We need, see, people are indifferent. Well, they aren't. Let me just tell you, I'm, I've been going to the pier on Saturday mornings. We were, Pam and I were there yesterday, and we've been just going and talking to people about Jesus. You would be shocked how open people are right now. People are desperate. But what it's going to take, it's going to take a church that started off with fire, ending up with fire once again. I happen to believe that the day of Pentecost has a double meaning. It was a prophetic word from the prophet Joel. In the last days, Joel says, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Even upon my men servants and maid servants, says the Lord, will I pour out of my spirit in that day. And it says, and then through it, many will come to know that I am God. And so that was a prophetic word that happened on the day of Pentecost, but I believe it had a double meaning because it goes on to say there will be, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord. The star, stars are going to fall from heaven, all these things. Well, all that did not happen on the day of Pentecost, which tells me there's a second Pentecost coming. And I believe it's going to start now in 2023. But what it's going to take, it's going to take a sacrifice. Because God pours his fire out on the sacrifice. Well, I'm way ahead of myself, but let me just give you a couple of scriptures here. In Matthew uh, uh, chapter 3 and verse 11, uh, Jesus, or not Jesus, but John the Baptist here, he says this. He says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He, talking about Jesus, we sang about Jesus, only Jesus this morning. Wasn't that so cool? What a great song. I was like, oh, I'm so broken, man. He will baptize you. We talk about this all the time. Are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? But notice what it says. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. In Luke chapter 3, it, it comes up again. John answered and saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. He will, he will, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Let's pray and let's invite the Holy Spirit. Pray for me. I just appreciate your prayers that I'll deliver what God wants me to say today. So Lord, we come, I come in my weakness to you this morning, and I say, let's go Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, speak to us through the word of God. I thank you, it won't return void, but it will accomplish. It is, the word of God itself is like fire. And so Lord, I thank you that you're about to set us on fire in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And so here Jesus, John the Baptist says he's going to come, Jesus, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. How many of you have ever heard the phrase, they're on fire? Have you ever heard that phrase? Maybe you're not old enough in, in the church, but back in the day we used to say, man, that person's on fire. I bet if I, you know, just saying those words, I, bet, I wonder how many of your minds go immediately to Carmelo doing the announcements and say, well, man, that Carmelo, he's on fire. Well, how many of you think that God would like a few more? 
of his saints to be on fire. And by the way, being on fire doesn't mean you have to be all hyped up and excited and yell and stuff like that. That's just Carmelo when the fire comes on him. You don't have to be hyped to have fire. You just have to have fire. And so here, um, uh, you know, I remember when I first got saved, I was a hippie drug addict in, in the Bay Area, and I meet Jesus on the side of a mountain. I get radically born again into the kingdom of God, believing that Jesus is real, God is real, you know, and there is a heaven and there is a hell. And uh, I had a lady that discipled me uh, the first few months of my salvation. Her name was Amy Piedmont. And uh, I told Amy, I said, well, listen, Amy, uh, no church. I'm not interested in getting in any church. And then she tricked me one day into getting, going to church. <laughs> and so I was the first hippie in this church. Okay. And so I'm there and, all, you know, I... I, I, when they, every salvation, every Sunday when they said, would you like to receive Jesus? I went forward. I probably got saved a hundred times, you know. They said, if you want to, if you haven't been able to get pregnant, come forward. I went forward, man. I'm going to, I just want, I just want more of Jesus. And I, I didn't understand uh, this church uh, they had, like, Wednesday night was testimony night, right? Wednesday night, testimony night. Which meant, testimony means you, you know, the pastor says, does anybody have a testimony? So somebody stands up and tells something that God's done in their life, right? That was really great. Now, I didn't, you know, I'm brand new. I don't know how church works. And so I thought, it meant that anytime you thought of anything good that Jesus did in your life, you're supposed to stand up and say it. I didn't know there was a timing to it. I'm not joking. And I would stand up in the middle of the pastor's message. Pastor Johnson, this is such a great message, but I just got to tell you one more thing that Jesus did for me. The whole church was like, <laughs> it was like, you're messing our program up. Anyhow, and I didn't know. I was, you know, they had mercy on me. But, um, but here it is. Then they, you know, then I started hearing, they're like, well, man, that Fred, he's on fire. And the interpretation of being on fire is, one, you're excited about Jesus. And for me, it was like, you know, I couldn't stop saying, praise the Lord. You know, you call me on the phone, praise the Lord. It's like, you are weird. <laughs> and it was, we got to tell people about Jesus. Everywhere you go, you got to tell people about Jesus. Because why? Because there is another fire called the fire of hell that's for all eternity. And if we don't tell them about Jesus, they can't get saved because there is no coming back once you're dead. And so we... Describe somebody on fire as somebody that was excited about the Lord, um, passionate about the Lord, wanting to tell everybody about Jesus, you know, just uh, all those kind of things. And um, what I believe is that, you know, then we kind of go along and we're moving forward into the history of the church here in America, and then it becomes cool. Uh, we just want to soak before the Lord, and I'm not against that. Please, okay, I'm... You know, if you're offended, don't email the church, please. <laughs> or, and I just want to have a nice, mellow worship through the Lord and all that. Well, that's great. I'm for all that stuff, except for we need some fire in the church. Yeah. We need some people to have a fresh baptism of fire. Yeah. I want you to notice this in Acts chapter 2. It says this, and when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. One version says in one accord, but it wasn't a Honda. <laughs> they were all in one place, together in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. 
You know, I think that we, we need spiritual encounters. We need more than just words. The Apostle Paul says, when he writes to the Corinthians, he says, when I came to you, he says, I came to you in weakness and in fear and trembling. And my message was not with great persuasion. In other words, I'm not an eloquent preacher. But he said this, but I came to you in demonstration of power and the Holy Spirit. Why? So your faith will be in God and not in people. See, we got to be careful. At the end of, I think it's um, uh, the book of Philippians, I want to say Philippians, it says, children, keep yourselves from idols. I think we can idolize people. We can, we can put people uh, up in a place that Jesus needs to be. And, uh, and we need spiritual encounters. So they, they weren't impressed with Paul, but they were impressed with God. We need people to walk out of the bridge like, I don't know what Carmelo said, but I got set on fire. God changed my life. I had a visitation from God. I had a vision. I mean, I fell down on my face like a dead person. We need the wind of the Spirit in the church once again. We need another sound rather than some preacher standing here on the pulpit. We need the sound of the wind to come in. Now, we don't build everything on spiritual experiences, but hey, we could use a few. And so it says that it filled the entire house where they were sitting and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. I want you to note there that when the fire came, it didn't come just on Peter or John. In fact, what it says is that was, uh, there were 120 people in the room. And by the way, just a little note here. Before Jesus ascended back to the Father, it said he, and now he, he was seen by over 500 people. Now, okay, let's, 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 let's say that, over 500 people. He was seen by over 500 people, and he said to the over 500 people, I want you, don't do anything until, but I want you to go to Jerusalem, and I want you to stay in a room until you are filled with power from on high. How many showed up? How many showed up? But he talked to over 500. Years ago, I discovered a ministry you know, we talk, you were talking about gifting and ministry, and I discovered a new ministry. It's the ministry of showing up. You know? If you show up, God's going to do something. If you show up, if you're committed, God's going to do something. It also says this in that passage. It says, notice this. It says... Um, Tongues of, divided tongues of fire appeared upon and rested on each one of them. I'm going to back up a little bit there. It filled the entire house where they were. What does it say? It filled the entire house where they were. Did anybody see the word? Sitting. Everybody say sitting. Here it is, folks. If you want to have the fire of God come on your life, you need to be sitting somewhere consistently. You need to be committed to a local body of believers. Well, I'm just, you know, more spiritual than everybody. No, you're more stupid than everybody. Because Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 and 25 says, Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves, as is the habit of some, but so much more. What so much more? Get together so much more as you see the day of Proleans. And before it says, I want you to stimulate one another. In other words, iron sharpens iron. One man sharpens another house. So let the sparks fly and let's set some fire in the house. You don't get spiritual by being yourself. You get spiritual by having to be around other people and overcome all their issues and say, I forgive you a whole lot of times and overlook and learn how to love one another as Christ loves us. 
And so you need to be sitting somewhere. You need to stay somewhere. You know, the reason a lot of people change churches is because God starts to pinpoint some things in their life and they're like, I feel led to go to another church. <laughs> These people might find out I'm a sinner. <laughs> they might find out I have a problem. Join the club. <laughs> this is the Jesus Club. <laughs> Join the club. We all come short of the glory of God. But thank God we can encourage one another, challenge one another, strengthen one another. And if we get together, the fire just might fall on us. And here it is. Let me give you a good reason to never miss church. What if you miss the Sunday the fire comes? Oh, no. Everybody's like, what? Man, that was well, so awesome, you know. I always love the idea of, you know, I like to prophesy over people that aren't there. <laughs> I tell them the next week, um, there was a word from the Lord for you, but you weren't here. <laughs> and I can't remember it. But it was good. And so you have to determine... Man, I am not going to miss the fire. When the door is open, it, I, I mentioned, you know, I told, this, I, I told this lady that was discipling me, I don't think church, I said, don't try to get me in your church. And she said, why? I said, because I don't think church and Jesus are the same thing. I didn't see any connection between the church and Jesus because all my friends in high school went to church. They were believers in Jesus Christ that went to church every Sunday and not one of them ever told me about Jesus. So I, I, in my mind, I thought, well, church and Jesus aren't the same thing. And then she tricked me into going to church on a Saturday. <laughs> she said, Fred, there's this meeting at the church on Saturday and it's not church. And I said, okay, I believed her. <laughs> she lied to me. It was the first time I ever heard Amy lie. I was just like, and so I, I went to church and I sat down. Mark my word, I saw angels in the room. I saw angels flying at the front. I'm like, man, I am in. Man, when the doors were open, I was there. Because I don't want to miss the angels and I don't want to miss the fire. And so they were sitting somewhere. And then out of this, it says now there were uh, you know, fire came upon each one. And so that's it. You see, what makes a church great is not Carmelo on fire or Pastor Justin on fire. It's when the people of God are on fire. There, Carmelo's responsible to stir up his own fire. But what about your fire? What if we had a whole room of people that had a fire on their head? Woo! You wouldn't have to, you could put a rock up here and it'd preach. Right? Amen. And so there was a fire on, so notice again here, it says there was a fire that rested on each one of them. Amen. Don't come to church to get set on fire. Come to church to set other people on fire. Don't come for somebody to lay hands on you. I'm not saying, again, please mis, don't misunderstand me. Have people pray for you. But don't come to get prayed for or come to pray for somebody. Amen. Don't come to get encouraged. Encourage somebody. Let me just tell you, as I think you quote, whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. If you pray for someone, someone's going to pray for you. If you encourage someone, you're going to be. If you love on someone, you're going to get love too. Come on. It's a win-win situation. You cannot lose. And so what if we all, before we came to our church, like, I'm just going to set my, poof, I'm going to set myself on fire. Hallelujah. And then I'm going to go to church. Amen. You know, it's not this, I just, this is, I just want to talk about first service, not second service. <laughs> Sometimes people come to church and you think they were baptized in lemon juice. 
I used to say, if you're saved, you need to inform your face. Because my Bible says, happy is the people that knows the joyful sound. Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. And if you're happy, you're smiling. Can I just tell you, a smile can minister to people. You know, you would just walk around. I, I remember uh, one of the first times I went to New York City. This is before 911. Before 911 in New York City, people were just mean and nasty. How many of you have ever been to New York City? I mean, talking about Manhattan and all that. It all changed after 911. People changed their attitudes. But I remember, for, you know, at that time I'm living in the Midwest. I'm from California and I'm living in the Midwest. The Midwest, you say hey to everybody. Hey, how you doing? You know? So I'm walking down the streets of Manhattan. Hey, how you doing? People are going for their guns. <laughs> they never seen anything like this before. A person that was happy and friendly. Man, I'm so far off my sermon, it's not even funny. <laughs> so we're responsible to make sure we get the fire on us. You know, if we just had 30 people in this church that were totally set on fire, man... Can I tell you, it would be one exciting place. And I'm not saying you're not on fire. I mean, somebody's like, Pastor Fred said I wasn't on fire, that I'm baptized in lemon juice. What am I going to do? I'll tell you what to do. Get saved. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Put on your praise. Where was I? Okay. It says now this, it says, now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews and devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitudes came together. And they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in their own language. I see a couple things there. Notice this, when the church is on fire, there's a sound that goes out that attracts people. There's a sound going out. Then it says they each heard in their own language. When the church is on fire, then the world's going to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right, I want to just mention, uh, I'll show you here. Well, let's not do that. Let's go to seven things that fire does. So God wants to, I believe it's time for the baptism of fire to come out, come on the church. Again, I already said this earlier, but the church started with fire. You know, some people have this, end time revelation that the church is just a remnant that's hanging on till Jesus comes. You know, we're just a little defeated flock. Oh God, I hope I make it to the rapture. I hope you make it too. But I hope, <laughs> oh God, we're just this little poor little flock. That's not the Bible, that's not the church I see in the Bible. The church in the first century, the Bible says when they went to a city, the city began to quake because they said the people that turned the world upside down have come to our town. And so the church started with a fire and it's going to go out with a fire. The fire of God is going to come upon us. So what does fire do? Notice these seven things here. Number one, fire attracts attention. If you're in the dark and you see a fire, you notice it immediately. You see it. Secondly, fire lights up the darkness. How many of you think we're living in darkness today? So what's the answer? Set ourselves on fire. You are, remember Jesus started out and said, I am the light of the world, Jesus said. But then before he left, what did he say? No, you are the light of the world. How do you be a bright light? Get set on fire. Get the baptism of fire. You're going to shine brightly. Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has appeared upon you. I believe we need to get to the place. Like in our neighborhood, I walk my neighborhood on a regular, place, regular basis. I walk around for exercise. I know it shows. 
And a lot of my neighbors now, they know exactly, when I come by their house, it's the glory of God coming by their house. Not anything to do with me. It's his fire. But I think we need to be that way where we change the atmosphere of our neighborhood. Amen. We go to the school and change the atmosphere of the school. Kids come not because they see your butt. You'll get that in a minute. They come because they see the fire of God. Something's burning in that building over there. I don't know what it is. It's lunchtime, and yeah, I want to eat lunch, but there's something burning over there, and I need to go take a look at it. What is it? It's the people of God who have set themselves on fire. Fire heats things up. Fire's not going to bring peace to the world. Fire's going to bring a challenge to the world. Fire burns up wood, hay, and stubble. In fact, the Bible actually says that we're going to pass through a fire. He said, oh, wait a minute, I thought I was beating the fire. No, there is a fire you're going to go through. When we get either raptured or we get, you know, if, we got, we got, if we're alive when Jesus comes back or we go to be with him, the Bible says you're going to pass through a fire and everything that's, that wood, hay, and stubble is going to be burnt up. Only that which is gold and silver is going to get through the fire. Purif fire purifies precious metals. You are precious me metal. You are a gem to God. Uh, fire scares, I like this one, fire scares predators away. How do I get the devil off my back? Set yourself on fire. The devil does not. He knows he's going to be there for all eternity. He does not like fire. So the best way to get, keep the devil off you is get so much of God's fire that, you know, I guarantee he's like, mm, I'm not getting around that guy. I'm not getting around that lady. There's just too much fire. If I get close, I'm going to get burned. Another one is fire can heal an infection. You know, sometimes it's the fire of God that actually heals us. Now, I just want to go back to a quote here, and just don't put the quote quite up yet. But there was a great preacher named John Wesley, who was in England. He preached all over Britain, and, all, and he came to America and preached in America, and thousands of people would come to preach, hear him preach. He would preach outdoors. One reason, he got kicked out of his church. <laughs> he didn't have anything else to preach. But Pam and I, this year in March, we went to the first place that John Wesley ever preached. It's in uh, Bristol, England, and it's this hill, and it actually has a pulpit there and a hill. It's got pictures, and he, he, he would preach there. And we're, we were there in March, and it was freezing, and it was raining. And I'm like, who would stand out here on this hill to hear somebody preach? But he would go there and stand and preach, and literally there would be two or 3,000 people that would come to hear him preach. One day, a reporter, a news reporter, was interviewing him, and he said, why do thousands of people come to hear you preach? This was Wesley's answer. I just set myself on fire, and people come to watch me burn. What if we here at the bridge decided we're going to set ourselves on fire and just let people come and watch us burn? All right, I want to end with this. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it talks about offering up spiritual sacrifice. Remember, sacrifice. Remember the Lord said to me, I'm going to pour fire on the sacrifice. So here Peter says, you yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house to be holy, a holy priesthood. Notice this, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So here he's talking about spiritual. In the Old Testament, they offered up animals. But now in the New Testament, it's talking about spiritual sacrifices. What are they? Four kinds of spiritual sacrifices. I'll just mention the first three, and then I want to talk about the last one. The first one is worship. Thank God for worship. As we worship, worship is not the warm-up to the message. 
Worship is an encounter with God. The second one is prayer and intercession. If we will pray, you have to understand, your prayers aren't just going to the ceiling. They're actually going to the very throne of God where an angel is standing there with an incense burner and there is, a, there is an altar before God that is full of fire. And it says, God tells the angel, take the prayers of the saints and mix them with the fire on the altar and then cast fire on the earth. Prayer brings fire. The third one is reading the word of God. Jeremiah says, but his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones. Another one is fasting. That's a dirty word, fasting. But listen, fasting brings the fire of God. Then the last one I want to end with, and that is personal sacrifice. The very first verse of scripture that I read or memorized when I was first saved, so this is 53 years ago, was Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 1. It says a little different there, but it, it, this is what it read when I memorized it. I beseech you. That means I beg you. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto him, which is your reasonable spiritual worship. Now, I don't know anything at that point. I still don't know much. But um, when I read that scripture, I beg you to present your body a spiritual sacrifice. The way I looked at it is that when I was growing up as a kid, when I was in grade school, at the very beginning of the year, the teacher would take roll call. How many ever remember that? So the very first day, I, and I dreaded this day, because the teacher would go around the room, they'd call, you know, Carmelo Hernandez, here, you know, you know, Abby Farrington, here, you know, so on. And I knew they were gonna get to my name. Now my name is Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. -P. As God is my witness, every year with the new teacher at the beginning of the year, the teacher would mispronounce my name. I'm not making this up. Fred Crap. Um, anybody here named Fred Crap? I don't know anybody named Fred Crap. And I would die a thousand deaths because the rest of the year, you know what I was. Gonna... That's right. But Romans 12, 1, how I read it is that God takes roll call every day. He's looking. See, you don't have to have it all together. You don't have to be super spiritual. You don't have to know every verse in the Bible. But what you do have to do is be available to God. Is to present your body a living sacrifice. And I really believe when God said to me, I'm going to pour fire on the sacrifice, he was talking about there will be people in the church that will offer themselves up as a sacrifice for me to pour the fire of God on. And I believe that that is you and me. We, we need to become the sacrifice, the animal. See, when, when Paul wrote those words, he knew exactly. It, he was studied, you know, he was a, a Pharisee, a Pharisee, which means he knew everything about the law. He knew all about the animal sacrifice. He knew it meant that that animal was going to be put on an altar, killed, and offered up as an offering to God as a sweet smelling. And so he knew it meant giving my life completely as a sacrifice to God. That's the kind of people we need today. That's the kind of Christians we need in America today is those that willingly offer themselves as a living sacrifice and saying, God, I'm the sacrifice. Send the fire. Let's all stand. This morning, my challenge to each one of us is that you and I would willingly come to God Right now, right this morning, I'm not saying fire's gonna fall, 
but the fire will fall. But it's only going to fall on the sacrifice. So, Pastor Fred, we, li- we kind of like that idea of being on fire. <laughs> but how do we get there? Right now, you're going to start by making yourself the sacrifice. Which means, God, you have my whole life. You call the shots. It's not about me. It's about you and your will for my life. So I want the prayer team to come on up here right now, but I want to pray for us all. If you come on up, prayer team, real quick here. If you say this morning, I want to be the sacrifice that God pours his fire on, then I want you to get out of your seats and come and stand in the front right now. I want to be a, and if you don't come out of your seat, it doesn't mean you don't want to, but if you want to just step forward and say, you know what, I want to be the sacrifice. Just get out of your seat. Come and stand in the front right now. We're going to pray over everyone. Yes, God bless you. I'm praying this over me. I'm standing here with you. I'm not the guy up here telling you how to do it. I am the guy saying, I realize that if I want the fire of God, and and let me just say, I'm at the place in my life, I started off in the Lord on fire, and I want to end up in the Lord on fire. Come on, step forward, guys, more, because people are trying to get in here. I want to be. Come on, I'll help a little bit more. Thank you. There's still people trying to get in. Again, by not coming up, I know you're not saying, well, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be a sacrifice, because I believe you will. I believe that we're going to get there. <laughs> We're going to get to that place because God's going to have a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. He's going to finish what he started. And so lift your hands to the Lord, even out there. God, we just come this morning, we of the bridge. We don't know what they're doing in the other churches, but we do know what we're doing in this church. And Lord, if you, we, we pray, oh God, that we would be the sacrifice that you would pour the fire on. Lord, we want it, not that we get the praise of like that person's on fire. No, 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 no. But for the sake of your purposes and plans, for the sake of the kingdom of God, for the sake of the glory of Jesus, for the sake of the lost people of Santa Maria and Central Coast and California and the United States of America, they don't need another political movement. They need a move of God. They need a move seeing the fire of God on the house of God once again. And we make ourselves available right now and say, yes, Lord, use me. I present my body a living and holy sacrifice right now. Right now. Come on, I can't pray for you. You got to pray for yourself. Come on, you got to pray for yourself. You can... Come on, you got to pray for somebody else. Maybe put a hand on a shoulder. Come on, set us on fire, God. Set us on fire. Set us on fire. Pour out your fire. Set us on fire. Let us burn with the passion of the love of Christ. God, we pray that. uh, We're crying out to you, God. We're crying out to you, God. God, pour fire on this sacrifice. Lord, I'm just this weak human, but God, I give you everything that I have. I give my whole self to you. I give the rights to my life to you. I give the control of my life to you. Make me that sacrifice that you pour out your fire. And God, do it again. Do what you do and did in the book of Acts again. Let fire appear upon each and every one of us, God. I pray that. I'm asking for that. I'm crying out to you, oh God. God, we want to shine like a light in the midst of darkness. God, we're praying that right now. Thank you, Father. Fill us up fresh. 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 You said that we should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill us up fresh right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. All right, before I end this, I want you to put your hand on the shoulder of someone next to you and pray over them right now. Come on, give them your best prayer. Come on, pray over them right now. Come on, pray over them. Come on, release God in them. Even in the, yes, 
That's right. Pray for them right now. God, set me on fire. Set them on fire. God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Man, I feel this. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 All right, everybody look at me right now. Everybody look at me. If you're here this morning and you've never really put your faith in Jesus Christ, this is your day. Come on. God wants to get a hold of your life. And listen, you say, well, what if he messes my life up? No, you already did that. You don't need his help. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. Save from what? Save from your stupid decisions and choices and actions. Save you from yourself and from, your, from sin. And so if that's you, you're here this morning and you've never said, you know what, I've never really believed or trusted in or put my faith in Jesus or I need Jesus in my life. Would you wave at me real quick here and say, Pastor Fred, pray for me. Yes, God bless you. Anybody else? Yes, God bless you. Anybody else? Say, yes, God bless you. Yes, back there, God bless you. Come on, let's give these people, I want to give my life to Jesus. Now, I'm going to pray a prayer right now. I'm going to pray, but it, it, but it isn't the prayer that saves you. It's your faith that saves you. Putting your faith in Jesus, not in yourself. Relinquishing yourself to him, saying, Lord, I remember when I got saved, God said to me, Fred, um, he said, how's your life going? I said, not very good. He said, well, let me take a chance at it. I said, well, you couldn't mess it up worse than me. <laughs> so I just put my life in Jesus' hands. And guess what? I've been, my, my family all thought, he's going to get over it. <laughs> you know, he's just weird right now, but he'll get over this. Well, that was 53 years ago. I still haven't got over it. <laughs> Jesus still does good things in our lives. So just those of you that raise your hand, just pray this with me. Say, Jesus, I give my life to you. I believe you are God, the Savior of the world. You died on the cross, and you rose again to save me. Forgive me. Wash me with the blood you shed. Be my Lord and master the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. 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 All right, make sure you bless 100 people on the way out. If you need prayer, the prayer team is up front here ready to pray for you about any need.